Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what causes alexithymia? To help answer this question, I'll be using an article that was published by Brown and colleagues in 2018, and I'll put the reference to this article in the description for this video. So let's first start with the construct of alexithymia, and then we'll take a look at some of the possible causes. So alexithymia is a construct, as I indicated. It's a condition. It's not a mental disorder. It won't be found, for example, in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, the DSM. So alexithymia really has three distinct components to it. The first is a difficulty identifying emotions. And what we commonly see here is difficulty distinguishing between bodily sensations and feelings. The second component is a difficulty describing feelings. So this would be a difficulty in expressing or communicating an emotional state to someone else. The third component of alexithymia would be an externally oriented cognitive style. So what this means is that there would be a low level of introspection. So somebody would tend to focus on external facts and not on feelings. We could think of this as concrete versus abstract. Somebody with alexithymia would tend to think in concrete terms and not abstract terms. So we could think of this in terms of the five-factor model as having some similarity to low openness to experience, specifically low imagination and low levels of fantasy. Another interesting point here with this third aspect of alexithymia is that this also tends to affect dreams. With individuals who have alexithymia, the dreams tend to be concrete. So not just the thinking, but it also extends into dreams. Now with alexithymia, we also see increased levels of impulsivity, increased levels of aggression, and we see comorbidity with a number of other mental disorders. We see comorbidity with all of the cluster B personality disorders except for histrionic personality disorder. So this would include narcissistic, antisocial, and borderline personality disorders. We also see comorbidity with substance use disorder, eating disorders, depression, anxiety, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Some research has indicated that alexithymia actually predicts post-traumatic stress disorder. So specifically with this comorbidity to three of the cluster B personality disorders, it's not surprising that alexithymia is thought of as being highly stable. It's usually conceptualized as a personality trait. And of course, personality disorders are conceptualized as an extreme manifestation of certain personality traits. So again, it makes sense there would be this conceptualization for alexithymia. So the theory in terms of the etiology of alexithymia is that child maltreatment leads to alexithymia, and alexithymia tends to contribute in some ways to certain mental health symptoms. Now, if we look at child maltreatment, we break that down, one way we could look at maltreatment is that there's five types. There's emotional abuse, emotional neglect, physical abuse, physical neglect, and sexual abuse. So of these five types, alexithymia has been most closely linked to emotional neglect and emotional abuse, and really hasn't been linked very strongly at all to the other types of child maltreatment. Even here within this emotional domain, emotional neglect and abuse, there are mixed results. Some research indicates that emotional neglect is really etiological, that is causal to alexithymia, and other studies say it's really just emotional abuse. So we don't have an agreement in terms of the cause of alexithymia, but we are narrowing in on this area of emotional abuse and neglect. And that's what this particular study was really looking at this possible causal link, and they are also looking at the difference between males and females as they relate to the etiology of alexithymia. So what this study was really looking at is this idea that sex moderates the relationship between emotional abuse and neglect and alexithymia, that it affects the strength of that relationship. So in line with this theory, we look at some of the differences between men and women as they might relate to this possible moderation effect. So one interesting point we see in the research is that women tend to process emotional information differently. We see that women tend to process emotional information more accurately, 
but can also tend to be more reactive. The theory here is that this leads to a higher risk of affective dysregulation or a higher risk of developing mental disorders where affective dysregulation is a component. We also see here in terms of differences between men and women that there is a different prevalence of certain coping styles. So women tend to use coping styles like seeking social support and they tend to use emotionally focused coping styles. Men tend to use coping styles based on emotional inhibition and problem focused coping. So a few differences here in the prevalence of certain coping styles by sex. We also see here that childhood maltreatment predicts lower levels of social support and emotionally focused coping is positively associated with lexithymia. So in looking at this research that shows us differences between males and females, we can see that there's this idea that sex might be differentially related to childhood adversity. So what this means is that child maltreatment may affect males and females differently. And this difference would extend to this relationship between emotional abuse and neglect and alexithymia. So what were the results from this particular study? Well, we see here that the female participants in the study had a higher likelihood of reporting difficulty identifying feelings. Now again, this is just one of the three aspects of alexithymia. We also see that participants who had more emotional abuse and neglect had more difficulty identifying emotions. Now this was both male and female participants. We see in these results that neither emotional abuse nor neglect had a relationship to that external oriented cognitive style. So in a sense here, we're really not even talking about lexithymia. We're really just talking about the difficulty describing emotions. Now they did find that sex moderated the relationship between emotional abuse and neglect and that difficulty identifying feelings. And they offered a few possible explanations to why this finding was observed. We see here that women, more so than men, tend to look at life events as more serious, uncontrollable, and negative. And of course, emotional maltreatment would be a life event. So it could be that the difference is explained through this perceptual angle. It could also be these coping styles that I mentioned before. Childhood maltreatment predicts low social support. Women tend to use social support as a coping style and also emotionally focused coping styles have a positive correlation with lexithymia and that particular coping style is more prevalent in women than in men. It's important to note here, however, that for both men and women, the emotional abuse and neglect did seem to be causal. It did seem to predict lexithymia. So the differences by sex here are important, but we also need to keep in mind that this does appear to be an etiological factor regardless of sex. I hope you found this description of the causes of lexithymia to be interesting. Thanks for watching.